we've been doing here today is hearing from a number of journalists about what they think they need to hear from academics in order to allow those academics to promote their research but beyond that also to use expertise more generally. You need to think what it is you want to publicise, why somebody would want to know about it and uh, what is it you want to get out of that particular release to the press. And on top of the, the emails we are all about, all journalists now are constantly engaged on Twitter. Most journalists nowadays spend a lot of time on social media, particularly on Twitter. It's a good way to informally contact someone and say, hey, can I send you some information about my research? Could we have a conversation about it? Email is also good as a first approach, but you might not get a response for quite some time. We're mainly overloaded with information. Journalists and academics are broadly involved in the same function. That is, they are doing research and then writing it down and trying to transmit these ideas to as broad an audience as possible. Generally when we're doing research we'll be aiming to do some high quality academic work which we will publish as a technical paper and then we will generally try and put a non-technical paper out alongside that as well. If there are interesting things there, which we think are interesting to uh, the media and the public debate, we will put out a press release alongside it or have an event. But if we don't think there's anything interesting, we won't. There's no point trying to tell people about things they're not going to be interested in. Often academics are very nervous about how the research is going to be presented. They're worried that we're going to simplify it too much. But most journalists will really take the time and do care about getting it right. But they might make you go through in some detail to get down to the simplest form of your research. What are you really trying to say here? What's the significance? What's the impact? Readers don't really care that much about the methodology, right? So if it's like fixed effect... I think we learned that the kind of, you know, things can occasionally go wrong. We heard uh, from Tim Loining about particular experience he had. I got a lot of abusive email, I got death threats, and the LSE was there saying, do you want a new email address? Do you want us to read every... It's very important that universities corporately understand the pressures that academics can be under if they step out of their comfort zone. Most academics are very happy writing conference papers, academic articles and the like, but talking to the press and the media often worries people. My experience is that this virtually never happens, that journalists are reliable and trustworthy and genuinely want to know what academics think about important issues of the day. You in this room, you have to be sure that your press offices are strong enough to help someone in those circumstances because you have a legal and moral duty of care. And the LSE absolutely stood for that, it absolutely understood that, it absolutely was strong enough and it gave me everything that I could do. We learned that journalists are be trusted, you know, they will obey embargoes, or at least they, they will respect embargoes, that they will also, beyond that, also listen to people who want to be off the record or on the record, all of these kind of things. As soon as Radio 4 wakes up in the morning till the time it goes to bed, every single programme, I think, maybe but one, is based on some kind of academic research. So this is a perfect opportunity for researchers, professors, anyone beginning their academic career or someone who's much more experienced to get stuck into radio, that's how they're going to get there. For example, I manage the LSE's US Centers and USAP, United States Politics and Policy blog, and we're all about bringing academic research from the states and from LSE to the wider world through blogs based on journal articles, and we make sure we link to every journal article through a blog post, they're tweeted out to our Twitter followers, they're added on Facebook as well. We also have a really good e email newsletter. And so we had a really good roundtable discussion about the different kind of strategies people at different universities and, and think tanks were using to get their academics to write more often, to write shorter pieces, to write more accessible pieces. In recent weeks, we've been working on uh, research around the potential impacts of uh, a decision by the voters of the UK to leave the European Union, the so-called uh, Brexit question and we put out a string of uh, research reports about that. This, of course, is a very controversial area, and one of the issues that we've been discussing here at the uh, event today with the LSE Impact Team and the Institute for Fiscal Studies is all about how researchers can most effectively communicate their research findings and expertise in areas where there's a lot of uh, public controversy. 
I would say it's fantastic working in an area like migration because people are interested. It's very controversial, but it's controversial for a good reason. It's, it's very important. It's a major issue um, in the UK at the moment. Who's coming here? What kind of jobs they're, they're, they're doing? The impact that they're having on, on our society, on our culture. It, it's interesting. So I would say, I would say embrace it and just uh, realise how fortunate you are to be working in an area that, um, that engages the public so readily. There's no simple answer at all, but uh, the kind of recommendation that we mainly came across were people working in areas like migration, like climate change, where there's a lot of controversy, a lot of interest groups, is to embrace the con controversy. Take the opportunity to co communicate the research findings to a public that's receptive to information, facts, and an expert analysis that can help them influence their decisions, whether it's in a referendum, a general election, or just in their daily lives. In our session, we talked about uh, the differences between dissemination, engagement and impact and, and how when we talk about using social media uh, for these kinds of activities a lot of times uh, we're blurring the lines between all those different um, spheres and so we really wanted to sort of encourage um, people in the group to think about you know what are they looking to get out of social media and um, you know how might their social media and blogging presence uh, fit in alongside uh, these different activities. In the study the impact of the social sciences, Patrick Dunleavy, uh, Jane Tinkler and Simon Basto uh, realized that uh, the major difficulty uh, for uh, academics to have impact in business is in the initial stages of forming a relationship, getting to know each other uh, and then forming partnerships. And that's where blogs really can help because we open the doors uh, so that uh, businesses and academics can share content, know each other's content, and, and start creating relationships. I think we've picked up that academics can have some fun doing this once they've learned the rules, built up the contacts, and so on. And building up the contacts was definitely a message that came through very clearly, that journalists trust academics they've heard from before, they get nuggets of information from them or deep background for some stories. And in that sense, once a journalist has made a relationship with an academic and vice versa, that can be carried forward. If you want to be influential in media, I recommend you do just about every media opportunity you are given. Because by and large, people want someone to stand up and say something pretty damn obvious clearly. It's also partly, to be honest, a little bit about luck. It's about whether or not your research chimes with the context and really fits with the debate that's going on at that time. So if your research doesn't get picked up initially when it's uh, published, that's not the end of the story. There can be another day. If the debate bubbles up again around that particular area or subject, there might be another opportunity to go back to journalists and to say, hey, did you know we did this? It's really interesting. It fits exactly with the debate that's going on now. Finally, I think we learned that academics, if they're going to do this, have to be ready to be available for the shorter term uh, deadlines that journalists have as opposed to the longer ones academics often have. But other than that, it was a great morning, it was fun and even the weather, as we can now see, was good. <laughs>